Hey, there it is. Hey, we got the intro this week. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, wondering what was going on. I robbed the intro off of Treasure. That's the that's the oh. Treasure intro. <laughs> Look at that going. Look at that guy. There's, what was that guy, like 20 or something? <laughs> good times, good times. Oh, man. Intense look. Intense look, stare. Boom. There it is. <laughs> fun stuff, fun stuff. Nice. Ricky, how's it going, man? Doing good, man. It's it's cold here. It got it went back. It's 35 today. I don't understand. I don't but, know. Uh, I don't know about that. Weird. We have none of that in the H Town. It is uh nice in spring. All the flowers blooming. The orange trees are full of flowers. It's happening down here in Houston. So it's happening. It's spring. I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> we'll send some your way here. Hey, we have got an awesome topic. This is a part two. It's a continuation. Let me get us in. That didn't work. Dude. Let's do this. Ba-chow. There we go. There we go. Now we got hands. We can do full graphics. Jeff Copeland here <laughs> joining you from the Copeland Coins World Headquarters in Houston, Texas. Rick, where are you at? I'm in uh, near Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah, right. Rick is in Raleigh. A in town Carolina. no one's heard of. A town no one's heard of. <laughs> it's all right. We've heard of you, and that's what matters. <laughs> that's what matters. So we've got part two coming up of Coin Magic Without Coins, or Magic Without Coins. Coin ma is Coin Magic particularly, right? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Coin moves and and coin ideas, Move. but with other objects, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Slights, slights, shakers, bakers, tricks of the trade, pressed digitation, all that stuff. Ideas without coins. Now we did this a uh, month or so, beginning of the year, and it was a huge success. A lot of people watched it, and you're gonna want to go back and check out. Uh, we gave away some ideas, there's an idea or two there that could be, they could have been money-making projects and um, got a got a feeling we might be doing that again here today. What do you say, Rick? Might be doing that again here today, giving away some just free stuff that. I, this is new to me, so I'm in <laughs> on the surprise as well. I'm all for it, though. Yeah. Boy, <laughs> The way this is going to work is Rick and I have uh, have a handful of ideas, and we're always creating. If you guys haven't seen, we should have started the the trailer uh, with uh, with recoil. If you guys don't know, Rick used an everyday item to create a phenomenal, uh, practical everyday worker routine uh, called recoil, and um, that's kind of the concept here: taking non magic items and applying them. Uh, maybe some of them are magic items, but non coin items and applying them to coin slights and seeing what we can do. So, um, Ricky, we didn't talk. Should we flip a coin? Who goes first here today? Are you eager? Or are we? Uh, should, I, should I come up with something here? You go ahead. Me, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, the first thing that came to mind here, and this may have been may have been chatted in the last live stream, is uh, this guy right here, which is a uh, bottle cap. Bottle cap. Now, uh, I think somebody put this in the comments last time. But we didn't quite get to it, did we? I don't think we chatted. It was in my my list. That's why we're doing part two. We might make it to part five with the ideas we have. Uh, the bottle cap is a great coin-like object. You see it's about the coin size, a little bit smaller than an American half dollar. Here, about the same size, a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller. And what it has is the reeded edges, like a coin, so you can actually walk it like that. And it does an amazing classic palm so that when you palm it, it actually like bites into the flesh. So you can do some amazing slights. If you're ever out and about and you don't have a coin, um, maybe on the ground or in the trash can, or you can just crack open a, uh, a soda. Got my Jones soda here. I thought this was great. It had Zoltar on it. Uh, so I had to pick this one up. <laughs> While you drink it, the fizzy bubbles react like a magic eight ball and answer your, your questions. It's kind of amazing. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, a bottle cap, and particularly this one has a, I found one with a woodpecker on it. You have animals, all kinds of stuff. You can do color changes with your bottle caps, and they do uh, excellent magic with coins. little light. There's some side effects. They're a little bit light, 
really hard to do a muscle pass. It doesn't want a muscle pass at all. <laughs> Maybe off the other side. Yeah, but there. Yeah. Rick, you ever perform with the bottle That's cap? That's really great. That's really great for like a chink a chink mm -hmm. uh, on the table there. Cause you can you can get your flat your hands flat on the table to do the necessary move, and then you could lift away from the table and move to you know the corners before yeah. you release that hidden guy. I mean they, they said and I, I I'm blank enough, I actually saw it in person. They said David Roth could could classic palm a coin off the table. And I don't know if you guys watched have ever tried this. This is that's a very ridiculously hard thing to do is to classify because the coin is just so flat to catch in classic palm. But a bottle cap, just because it's raised up, it's like a stack of three or four coins, maybe three coins, you can actually classic palm it off a table. So what Rick is talking about, if you've ever stayed, you could check this routine out. Chinka chink. It's a classic coins across. It's is that the precessor to Matrix, I would assume. I believe Chinka Chink is much, much older than, than Matrix. Probably. Uh, there's a routine in Bobo's, I think, called Sympathetic Coins, and it, it used the cards. So they're, they're all inspired by each other. I, I'd have to really look at, like, the assembly plot itself. Mm. But Yeah. Yeah. Chinka Chink just sounds like an old name. It sounds like a magic trick from, from an eon ago, from a century ago. You know, it just kind of has that vibe of 1920s or before. So oh, yeah, I know Al Snyder was as credited with inventing the matrix and he's not quite that old. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so bottle caps, definitely a good idea. Chinka chink, you can do your matrix on the tabletop and stuff like that. And it could be very impromptu, very impromptu. So, yeah. Especially yeah. like in, if you perform in a bar or something, mm -hmm. you know, people, you, if you're performing, hopefully you're not drinking. But for the people there consuming, <laughs> you can grab bottle caps right there and, and do a bunch of stuff impromptu. Yeah. Well, speaking of alcoholic beverages, but <laughs> I've got, or my wife, I should say, has these little, these little guys, they, they grab oh, onto the stem of a wine glass. Oh. So you could... You can identify which glass is yours, but every time I see these in the cupboard, I, I got to take them out and play with them because they're just so cute, <laughs> you know, for the kids. This is for the kids. Just for the kids. But will, will obviously you coins? could, what's that? Will they eat coins? Not quite, but I mean, you could handle this like a, a, a little coin or a ball. Yeah. Like you kind of want to do cups and ball moves. Yeah. But, you know, they, they're they a little bit lightweight, so that's uh, kind of a big disadvantage. Mm. But, I mean, for kids to get excited about what you're doing, you know, this is oh, a great yeah. idea. And you can do your same coin slight with this object. Yeah. So, monsters monsters across or color changing monsters <laughs> you know I, I would think that those could have some advantages on switch type moves one-handed switch moves am i right on that they could have give you extra grippy points yeah i mean they're silicone so it's they kind of grip too much <laughs> oh that's interesting because I, I like to play with my, my kids' toys as well, like for a slot of hand. And I always look for things that have little grip points that are a little bit different so I can get different kind of pinches. And so particularly oh, yeah. with the kids, I'm sure you do the same thing, but, but Pikachu's ears are quite phenomenal for a very relaxed, natural hand. <laughs> but, um, well, that didn't work there, but you can quickly see how Pikachu and all these little points and stuff like that. There's some some things that work better than others so what you've got there uh it seems like when it's got some so they're silicone they grip but they don't have hard points is that what i'm gathering no they're just squishy just squishy yeah so so different things pikachu here is actually hard plastic so uh with these points and stuff it, it acts like reeded edges on a coin so i can i can get different moves yeah here. like that was out of frame i could i could force this guy 
between my fingers and because mm-hmm. of the silicone it really it's just the surface tension like i'm not even really gripping nice he's there. yeah yeah it's, it so looks it's like, oh yeah because silicone has that little that uh, little bite to it just kind of natural grippy i i was i was thinking yeah. there what i was asking about what how they can pinch because i, I just in my mind going back to classic coin magic, could you mark a coin with one of those as like, you know, sometimes guys do dots or stickers and color money and money moves and stuff. Like you could, you could get a copper silver coin or something, have it marked and then you could change color like by. Well, by okay. Not yeah. A little math a little t- is for a wine stem. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, but if you had something similar, maybe I just, just, I was just <laughs> workshopping there, even a, a tiny clothespin or something pinching on a coin to identify it yeah i don't know the the possibilities are (laughs) now you're looking like a curtis cam instagram post is what you look like i know (laughs) (laughs) those of that don't know curtis cam traveled around with anger from the movie um the emotion movie what is it oh gosh inside out inside out out. yeah so you guys if you ever follow curtis cam he's always posting anger traveling with him Angus represented by a volcano, Curtis Chemist Hawaiian. There's a whole thing going there. So. <laughs> well, you, that's you good, mentioned that's a good recoil. Line. Yeah, I did mention recoil. Yeah. And that's in the beginning, that's how the routine began. Like, I was just, I saw my daughter's toy. She had a, a Slinky Jr. there. Uh huh. And I just thought, man, that looks like a little stack of silver dollars in like, so it was the, the import, the importance of play is, is so crucial for creativity. So, mm-hmm. you know, I know we both have young kids. Say, say, so that again. Two, say that again. I don't know if people quite, quite heard that. Say that line again. The importance of creativity. It, it, it cannot be overstated. It's, it's crucial for, I mean, the importance of play yes. is so crucial for creativity. It cannot be overstated. And I know both of us have young children, so toys are just <laughs> part of the house. They're, they're, they're over there. They're over there. They are, part, they so, are pieces of furniture. <laughs> th- things just happen, and, and ideas just happen to connect sometimes. And so I'm always just kind of playing around and i i try to stay in that mindset yeah because you never know when an idea will just show itself to you a lot of people ask you know how do you come up with stuff or how how do you grow your creativity well i i don't i never have an answer it's just if you always try to Mm. stay in a, a state of play yeah then like you will always be able to receive these ideas. I don't necessarily come up with stuff. I just feel like, oh, look what I discovered. Mm. It was just there. I had to see it in the right mindset. So the, yeah. the key I think, is to maintain a mindset of play. Yeah, I think that's just so important. I mean, I I I I think that that's when you that's when you start to die for real is when you when you stop playing and um it's just it it's a part of it. I, I was very fortunate in my young years to live in mexico and one of the coolest examples i i ever saw of and I'm not saying my dad coached sports and he was out there with me and we always went fishing and we we did active things but i really thought it was amazing how much the dads played soccer with the kids you were never too old uh, at least in the village that I lived in, the people I lived with to play soccer. It didn't matter your age. And they just, they never stopped playing. And I think that creativity and that bonding the stuff in the family. And I, I, I just really think um, you, you nailed something there, Rick, about the importance of, of, of playing and getting out there. And it, I think it's, I think it's the key for a lot of our social problems. You know, I mean, people get so serious yeah. and you can get so serious about magic and everything and just go out there and play, go out uh, one thing we've been doing with the spring weather is I'm just out there playing with the neighborhood kids. We're out playing baseball. And and the cool thing about it is if you get one kid out there playing, all of a sudden, how many kids do you got out there playing? I don't know. You live on a crowded street, right? Yeah. <laughs> you get one or two kids out there, and then boom, you got 10. It's contagious. 
uh, and it's just, and everybody's feeling good. And like, it's just, um, yeah, I, I think it's, you, you nailed something there. You can apply that to your magic, your magic practice. You're going to see some, some cool things happen. For yeah. sure. Speaking of playing, I, I was, I was going to say another thing about bottle caps. Cause I was playing with this Caleb beforehand. If you guys know this one, uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the classic little hand, uh, little hand is, is, is magnetic. And so, um, whenever you uh, use a bottle cap, you can, you can actually <laughs> get, use magnetic stuff. So, um, there's a creative thing there. I've been playing with this. It just happened to be on my desk. And then I was like, lo and behold, we're talking about this today. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> who's up? We got to get a fresh idea. And we've got, we've got some time left here, but we got to keep this moving. Fresh idea. Who's up? You or me, Rick? I'll go. Okay. Along the, I'll get these out of here. Uh, you know, along the same lines of playfulness and, and toys, uh, I got this guy. <laughs> Who is that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Otis. Otis? <laughs> Hi, Otis. He likes coins there. <laughs> oh, yeah. He liked that one. Oh, hey, hey. Uh, <laughs> here. So you can... That's this the most again is my daughter's. I saw this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just but, a little. It can be a crab too. Oh my goodness. Like a ring. I don't uh -huh. know. I played with this, like putting it palm up. Like, what does oh, it yeah. look like That's this way? Or what does yeah. it look like this way? What does it look like if I put it, you know, way forward? Uh huh. Or if I move it way back, you know? Yeah, he gets different personalities, so, doesn't he? So here's a cool example of like, because of this, this toy and the way it fits, mm -hmm. that's going to dictate the different slights I can use. So an example is a French drop is a perfect slight for this situation. French drop is in, always the perfect slight. Don't wait, wait a second. Let's, <laughs> let's interrupt. <laughs> you come in and, and he munches this. Just like you oh, would man. a French drop. Oh my so goodness. So it's it's stuff like this that starts to spawn ideas because Yeah. Hey, do it the other way. Can it, he do a French a, drop? I'm just curious. <laughs> this is this isn't a hand anymore. It's like it's a character. So it's yeah. like it makes things change. I mean you could do like you could toss a coin in there. It looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But I think it, in particular the French drop just looks really good. Oh yeah. Cause he, you get that, that chomp. Oh yeah. And it becomes something else. You know, it's yeah. not, it's not really about the coin magic. It's about this character now. So it's, you know, that, that idea of play, it, it will improve everything you do. I love that, man. You know, I've played around with those and like trying to do magic things. I don't think I've ever, officially done it as a character eating coins and that is really wonderful rick i like it a lot i've got that's a new gonna, download available at copeland coins coming out this friday <laughs> new download new download. two hour project <laughs> yes two hours <laughs> bonus material coming <laughs> no um I, I i like that so much i am um I see so many applications that I'm going to toy around with that with my kids because I know we, we've got half a dozen around. Can he do the French drop like himself? Like if he turned, he turned upside down? Like I'm, I was just kind of, I don't know what that would look Turn like. Him if, upside your, down. If, your hand, if your hand is working as opposed to him, because I love what you say. Like, well, now that maybe like that would, that? Well, if he's on the outside, it'd have to be an inverted French drop, wouldn't it be? Yeah. You could do uh Oh yeah. Jeff <laughs> yeah, you could, couldn't you? Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. You know what I like about this, Rick, is you took the topic to the next level, didn't you? Because we said coin magic without coins, but we didn't mention the limitations that you just changed the hand as the prop, not the coins. That's yeah, it's not even the I'm changed the prop, I changed the the tools. Change the, the tools. hands. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it. Good deal, good deal. 
<laughs> cool. All right, that puts me up. I'm up. Um, I got a handful of things around here. I, while we're on the play, I will mention honorable mention here. Jax got some of these guys because I was talking about the Pikachu and um, things to play. These are actually silicone as well. Silicone jacks, I guess. <laughs> Too many lawsuits against the hard ones. I don't know. Now they're made of. Stock I knew food. a guy named. I knew a guy named Silicone Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but if he didn't know, Silicone Jack. I don't, even know. I don't even know what happened to this guy. But if you are in the market out there, if you're tired of stepping on shark toys in the middle of the night, now they come in silicone. But you can do. Look at all these slight access points. You can do everything with. You do color changes. Uh, you could definitely do um, Jack behind the ear. You can do all kinds of interesting stuff. And there's kind of animation, good stuff going on here. So honorable mention to the Jacks with bouncy ball because you mentioned balls already. You can do a lot of our slights. Where'd that go? <laughs> good stuff. I'm saving my best one for last, Rick, is what I'm doing. I'm saving my very best one because I've got one that's kind of clever here. And um, kind of clever. Again, things just laying around the house. Coin slights you can do here. Dang. Shaker. You can actually classic palm. Even though it is longer, it doesn't matter. You can get the same that slight you can get from a coin either end. You know, really creative stuff here. <laughs> Rick, if you're up, if not, I'm I'm going to my my trick of the day. If uh, if you got nothing, I'm ready to roll. Sorry, I'm digging in in my drawer there. Well, I'm, I'm my next idea deep. is lame. It's whatever. It's kind of lame. Whatever. But just that, you know, AirPods. Yeah. I, I've seen I've seen other people do this, but uh, just for the met mention for everyone here you know much like these guys uh -huh. a, a little air pod is like think of it as like a, a ball for like cups and balls or, or your chop cup routine you know this could be totally impromptu because you even have a, like a carrying case mm. you could show someone like a little trick uh well i guess you'd have the other one's in my ear but you could yeah. do like 10 kai pennies airpods oh yeah, yeah but very no, I mean, impromptu thing I, just, I, I i gotta jump in here because you know, this is not lame at all because what you've got is a coin box and you've got coin to impossible location and you've got um you've got a slot box in fact are those do those magnetically hold in yeah yeah so if you've got two of those suckers now now you can get Ear, earbuds ahead everybody assumes there's two into play your extra earbuds you can do slot box manipulation you can do deck changes you can do all your classic coin size because the right size of the case this is this is actually very very strong if i could i could see myself going to the to the the economy store and getting two sets of identical head buds that i might be able to pick up for 20 or 30 bucks each and now i can yeah. i can run coin box routines with a kicker ending in the ears this is this is good. You were going to publish that, weren't you? No, it, other people have stuff. Uh, you know, Mickey Wong. Oh, does he? Okay. In, in, what and, does uh, Mickey Wong not have? Come on, let's be honest. I don't know. Yeah. But the, the thing I was digging for was the Oh, there we picks. go. So, I mean, this is... Now, these are so lightweight, it's hard to do much, but... I could I could do something if I had to. And again, they're not they're lightweight and about the size of a quarter. So you know you could do vanishes, but it's hard to hold on to man and have <laughs> but I mean you could do guitar picks across and you know just another coin sized flat object to maybe be inspired by yeah absolutely i missed a lot of posts over here you guys thank you so much for the great comments coming in somebody talking about the pets curtis cam apparently has a yeah. spot with the big eyes um i think danik said you can get with unnatural movies yeah because <laughs> hand earlier was talking about earlier we got some comments on the salt shaker hey matthew hey alex 
And so uh, we got all kinds of stuff coming in here, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, what we got? Guitar picks. Who would have thought of that? I don't know. Rick Holcomb. I guess a lot of people would have. <laughs> Alex, I don't know if you got anything going on with, with guitar picks. But, yeah. So a lot of good ideas here. So thanks for thanks for bringing that stuff to the table. Rick. Now, I want to workshop on something here that I've got. And uh, like I said, I saved my best for last. I hope you guys find it the best. Uh, this is something that's definitely a little bit different out there. But uh, what I want to do is to show you guys uh, a trick with Starburst. Now, everybody in America, this is a common candy. It's called uh, Starburst, and they um, and they they come in different flavors. So, like I've got this yellow one here, and they also come in cherry. But uh, oh. I like uh, <laughs> the yellow. So, <laughs> dang, so they, dang! Hope that showed up in frame. That is um, the world's first, as far as I know. That's the world's first copper silver starburst, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's a copper silver coin made out of a starburst. <laughs> Very cool. There you have it. So, um, of course, we could do all of our copper silver routines with the, the copper silver starburst here. And uh, <laughs> this is something that wasn't hard to make. It just took the right props. One, you could just take two Starburst wrappers, but I found uh, Laura here in the office was color coding. You see the boxes behind me with all our wallets and coin boxes. Um, this right here, which is an incredible prop, new to me, and it now lives in the office. It's called uh, wasabi tape, uh, washi tape, excuse me. It's the washi tape. I don't know if you're, you crafters out there are familiar with this, but washi tape is quite amazing. And if you um, take this stuff, you can color code all your crafts or your we got guys we have like how many different kinds 16 32 different kinds of coin boxes something crazy so we have to color code things but it's it's a really soft tape that actually looks like a waxed candy wrapper unbelievable here and so uh yeah. what you could do is you could do a color change of sorts where you've got say the pink one and the, uh, the red one it turns into a pink one and this is the kicker because again we've wrapped and done different things i can actually um now take off this wrapper just like so and lo and behold, it was lemon the whole time. Oh, my goodness, a triple color change. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so really, really fun stuff here that you can do with a Starburst candy. And this is cheap stuff. I don't know where all they sell um, washi tape. You wouldn't have to use it, but it made it super easy to just kind of trim that. You see, I trimmed up some extra pieces. They don't even really match. I just put on some little corners and stuff, some little deceptive tags. Uh, I learned that years ago from um, when I used to do newspaper tear. Anybody ever done newspaper tear on, on stage? When I, every time I make the newspaper gimmick, I would just throw in glue on little scraps of, of extra newspaper to make the tears look more convincing. And uh, that's what I did here on the Starburst wrapper. I just took little triangles to make it look. Let me show you a real wrapper. That's a real wrapper. I didn't worry about all the writing or anything, but um, to just give it a little extra texture so that when you show it and then you can close your hand, flip it over. And again, I'll show you the model here. I just covered three sides with the washi tape. And again, I made it look like a wrapper. And then um, three sides I left plain. And of course you can change the color on the inside. So for example, today I picked up, I have a, um, this is a two tone starburst. I think I it might be two colors in there. It's yellow and blue. But, uh, yeah, if you open up there, yes, that's yellow, blue on the inside. So that, oh, that could be even different, right? Ukraine. Wrapper and a yellow wrapper, yeah, which that is. But um, Starburst, maybe Starburst was thinking, maybe somebody in the Starburst factory came up with this idea already. <laughs> Rick, what do you think, man? Well, you know, my first thought is, uh, why don't you make a shell? Oh, a starter shell. Well, you could. <laughs> <laughs> you could, you could. I, I think the possibilities are, are limitless. I, I will say the downside, like we've talked about, most of these ideas, most of these ideas are lighter weight, which are not as durable this would be maybe an Instagram. It's maybe not something you do every day carry in your pocket. And and if you particularly if you reveal, you know, there's a lot of reset going on here. But that's the kind of idea. 
And uh, I was talking to somebody like this. I'll, I'll kind of close out on this, Jim, and Rick, you can chime in here in a second. Um, I was talking to somebody about this idea about sleight of hand and why the tools that we use, just last night, the tools that we use for sleight of hand, like cards, coins, pins, everyday object, why do some objects rise above others and become staples, like playing cards? Are coins and why is that? Mm -hmm. And I think um, there's multiple reasons, particularly playing cards. They're colorful, they're shiny, they're flashy, that kind of thing. They, they show well, they can play big, little, small thing can get expand in size, right? But but some of these items, particularly like coins that we use, the reason we go to coins and we come back to them day after day is this object has literally been evolving for five, at least 5,000 years. I mean, it has come to modern technology to be this exact shape and has been evolving to be used by our fingers, by our hands. I mean, that's the purpose of this, that we can carry it in our pocket or a purse on a person. It has been evolving and becoming this object for thousands of years, to the point that everybody's familiar with it, and it is designed to be held at the fingertips. It's designed to have the right weight to feel natural, to feel comfortable for us. Like somebody along the way decided this weight, this measurement, was what was proper and what should be standard. And so as those things evolved, they become natural. And so I think that's to our advantage of the magician, because when we had that play that Rick talked about earlier, we had that creativity with a deck of playing cards or with the coin, because I mean, the playing cards, they, they've, they've evolved to be held at the fingertips in a fan of display to play a game of cards, right? I mean, that's why they're the size they are, because they fit in your hands. And so then when a magician starts taking that knowledge and really think about this. Okay, wait a second. This prop was made for me to put in my hands. It's not just an object. It was actually made for this. You can start really thinking about how to manipulate it and take advantage of the weight, the consistency, the shapes, the feel, the texture, the touch, the springiness, whatever that prop does. There, it's there for a reason because thousands of minds over the course of thousands of years have evolved to create this prop so that you can then go and think as a magician, play with it, and create something totally different, but using its characteristics. What do you think, Rick? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, as far as things coming, becoming popular, I mean, that, that for sure plays a role in just, just the heritage of magic and magic props. You know, there's so much tradition with where coin magic came from and card magic. So we tend to hold on to the same objects, but you know, a lot of, a lot of creativity, it's just a matter of connecting dots. Mm. So it, it's hard to really be completely original with something. Yeah. But it's all a matter of like, how obscurely you can connect two dots and make it work that I think that's the essence of creativity. So whether or not these props have become popular and what you see the most, that should never limit you to the skills and the slights that you use with them, uh, using those for other, other purposes, other props. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, the, consider uh, mentalism. Uh, if you study even a little bit of coin magic, you'll see how useful it can be yeah. when you want to switch a little piece of paper. Absolutely. And, you know, that's just one little example. So, Absolutely. So I agree with you completely, Rick, and I think that's it. And I think I, think, I hope that gives you something to chew on here today. Uh, that's why we think these ideas are great. We think they can help you. We hope to help you. Please take them, run with them, credit us. If you see something here, be sure and credit us and, and tag people and tell us where to, where to find us. As of today, though, we will still be continuing with the coins. We will be continuing along with the coins, and we believe that they are a wonderful, amazing tool to perform the most beautiful magic on the planet. They have the right weight, the right feel. And so if you guys need coins or anything to help you with the coin magic products, that's how Rick Rick and uh, Rick and I are here today. Uh, that's our business. That's what we help you perform beautiful magic. And if we can be of service in any way with all our props, tools, resources on the website at copelandcoins.com, that's what we have got for you. And we would love to be of service to you. So um, wishing you guys a happy 
hopefully happy warmer spring day wherever you're at or if you're in the southern hemisphere a nice uh, coming into to winter season we hope that you will stay in touch and be here with us next time as we continue on this conversation so rick what do you say it's time to close this out that's it thank you guys for being here and we'll see you next time absolutely go out there and make beautiful magic see you later <laughs>